Well, the gospel is very clear. The fathers are very clear that the that his history is not evolving to the better, but is devolving. It's right. dissolving. Nobody talked about evolution being guided by humanity. Right? That was never right. a part. Now it is. Now we're going to take the reins of evolution, and we're going to guide it now to to a post-human reality. Yeah. And these families think, well, we deserve to control evolution because you are who you are. You're not us. You're not elite. You're not of these families. You don't have our institutional power. You don't have our money. And therefore, what we're going to do is we're going to now redesign man to become the Superman or the Ubermensch that we want. In times of adversity, but the oh Lord of hosts have mercy on us. The sort of historical beginnings of this whole movement and how it came about exactly, you talked about because Darwin's going to play important, Nietzsche's going to yeah. play important, of course, yeah. then the Huxleys, both all yes. this, but more importantly, his brother Julian. Yes. Julian founded, he's the first person to really use the word transhumanism in a book titled New Bottles for New Wine. This is written yes. in 1957, and this was a rehashing of a long writing that he did in 1927, 30 years prior, which was called A Religion Without Revelation. And he mm. begins to articulate how we're going to take humanism and mankind and to elevate him to this new status using all this religious rhetoric. Again, he talks about how this is going to be the religion of the future, the religion without revelation. We don't need revelation now. We reveal it ourselves through our own scientific methods. And of course, Julian Huxley was, uh, the, you know, leader of the eugenics movement in Britain um, mm. and the Huxley family. Both, you know, their, their father was the bulldog for Darwin. Yeah, I, I don't understand why we're so, you know, why we're so uh, anti-Nazi and we think it's only in Germany. These people were in England. There were people in America. They were all saying the same thing. All saying the same thing. All saying the same thing across the board. And it's just that, the, you know, it continues on in these people. And, of course, of course, that's why, again, it will be a totalitarian end. There's no doubt about it. I mean, that 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 whole mentality is 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 melded with uh, with eugenics and yep. with the elite and all the rest and so and it's it's everywhere when you hear harari talk uh this man is not um he, he he talks as one who is a you know prophetically talking about the coming of a of, a, of an elite that will and he talks very disdainfully about the, you know the simple people the religious people and all the rest so yeah, it's not a surprise that right. you had this that th this um, in England and America this uh, eugenics movement is the precursor to transhumanism. Makes right. perfect sense. It, it's just, and it's also a continuation of Darwinism. It makes total sense if you're a Darwinist and you believe that survival of the fittest, you believe that this is uh, you know this this needs to be now applied to humanity and all the rest. That's that's a big part of the. Uh, the birth of the eugenics movement was was applying Darwinism to humanity, and now what what they're saying today is okay. Now, basically, I called it the end of evolution with the end in my my talk because I say, well, evolution is not. Nobody talked about evolution being guided by humanity, right? That was never right. a part. Now it is. Now they're saying, okay, so we're we're going to guide now. We're going to take the reins of evolution, and we're going to guide it now to uh, to a post human reality. But that's really the end of evolution, in, right. in, classically speaking. And, so and these, these families, so talking about Nietzsche and the Ubermensch, you mentioned in your talk, um, this whole idea that we're going to create the Superman and, and man in his relativistic demise, because God is dead, tradition's dead, um, that we have to then make ourselves more than that we are. Um, well, these families that uh, then adopt Darwin, again, even though Nietzsche was a vitalist, he was not a Darwinianist. But Darwin then says it's survival of the fittest, which then catches and matches on with with Nietzsche. Yes. And these families think, well, we deserve to control evolution because you are who you are. You're not us. You're not elite. You're not of these families. You don't have our institutional power. You don't have our money. And therefore, what we're going to do is we're going to now redesign man to become the Superman or the Ubermensch that we want. And they're doing it through the institutions. I mean, I would argue that transhumanism, despite how few people are part of the Humanity Plus movement, it, it, 
enacts an enormous effect on our culture. When you look at video games and video games that have transhumanist themes, Hollywood movies that have transhumanist themes, the, the nanotech, uh, AI, artificial intelligence, the stuff that's now being brought into mainstream medicine, talks of, of putting mRNA technology inside all our meat products here in the United States. They want to begin vaccinating all the, all the or jabbing, sorry, I'm using the wrong words, but jab, jabbing all the animals so that if you do or you are one of those naughty people that decide that you want to eat meat because it's, yep. it, it's strong correlative to male testosterone as animal products, well, then uh, we're going to make sure that you're going to, you know, be contaminated it's through this whole over, process they're going to offer you the bugs if you got yeah. the bugs <laughs> that's what we we saw a couple of days ago so yeah the uh you're absolutely right that this is um very much trickling down whether they they have masses that become transhumanist devotees is really insignificant insignificant Doesn't they don't matter care. The fact, they want most of these people to die and yes. we can already see that they're making way for that exact possibility because the way that they talk is they basically created a maze in the world and they're expecting that the most intelligent people to be able to move through it. And those are the people who are going to be selected and the people who fall victim to drug addiction. Again, maybe they have they they adopt medical procedures that are that are pushed by the government. <clears throat> we deserve to die. You don't need to be here anyways. We don't need you. In regards to the religions dealing with transhumanism, I say agreed with you. Orthodoxy has not only a unique perspective, but transhumanism is ironically almost an inverse of what orthodoxy teaches. So when you look at the other Christian denominations, Mormonism has their own transhumanist association. They were the first one outside what, what was initially the World Transhumanist Association. Now it's called Humanity Plus. The second organization created was called Mormonist Transhumanist Association, the MTA. And you now we see evangelicals hopping on board and we see, uh, of course, the, the universalists uh, hopping on board, all of them. And I think within Christianity, it has to do with their eschatology. Those that believe we're, the world's going to get worse, ebb and flow, depending on our own repentance to God, and those who believe in progress is the main differentiator, even within the Christian world, of how they're going to relate to this technology, because those um, who believe, even coming out of the Middle Ages, some of the scholastic schools believe that technology was going to redeem us back to the Edenic state. That is a totally different perspective, different perspective on progress and history than what orthodoxy would teach us. Well, the gospel is very clear. The fathers are very clear that the that his history is not evolving to the better, but is devolving. It's right. dissolving. Man, man and society, civilization is all on the path toward dissolution. And therefore, the Lord says, will I find faith on the earth? Faith is not uh, a belief in the existence of God, but it's a trust in the person of Christ. And so the fact that he's asking, will I find faith on the faith on the earth when I come back means that the man Christianity, the, uh, the the path of theosis, the 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 ascent of man uh, uh, to become God men by grace, wh which was the whole point of the incarnation to make us like Christ, go from the image to the likeness. That means we're at the, at the lowest point in history, and so <laughs> right, exactly. the, the existence the existence of of the world at that point, you know that that will signal the end of the world because right. what's the point? Why are we here? Well, it's to return to God, be with God. So it is a fundamental error. I mean, it's a, it just shows you the gross darkness that's existing right. among many so-called Christians that they can't pick up on such basic things here. Uh, it's a, I think it's another, it's another of many signs of our times where we're at in, right. the, in the path toward the, toward, toward the Omega. You know, exactly. In, uh, you know, Deschardins, the, the, the whole Omega point, the Jesuit theologian who developed it, uh, one, again, he lied about his, his findings in paleontology and evolution. He was, you know, right in bed with all the occultists and the various esoteric schools that believed in this hu sort of human humanist progress theory. And so it, it to me, it's the same thing over and over. And if you're a Christian, depending on how you view the progress of history is going to really depend on how you're going to relate to these technologies and where we're going to move forward in the next five to 10 years. Because it's it, it you know, as a men, as Orthodox Christians, we're going to have to put our foot in the ground and say, you know, this is what it is. This is my faith. And I'm not going to budge. As I say, we're not going to take any step backwards and too much. The Christian faith continually takes step backwards and. 
this new secularist faith, call it scientism or posthumanism or transhumanism. All it is, is this rationalistic pursuit, which le leads into one worshiping themselves, this apotheosis, which then the technologies are just going to promise you these attributes that you mm -hmm. that are only given to God. God only has these attributes in reality, but we're going to be promised these things. You know, there's so many, so much to talk about. Your mind's racing as you're talking. Where to, <laughs> where to begin? Um, one thing I want to point out before I forget is that the with the fall of man, with the with the un, with the lack of repentance on the part of Adam and Eve. Uh, of course, we know this. I, I don't think we need to repeat the story for our, for your listeners. Mm -hmm. What happened in the garden? But it's so instructive and it's so important, and it's of course very important right here in our topic. It's, it's how I begin my talk in Athens. And what's really important to understand is that so the. The, the Lord allowed for, after our fall away from and out of paradise and out of communion with God, now you have a state of, of this of this Adam and Eve man on this earth. And so he allows for, in a beneficial way, in a, in a loving way, which people are going to maybe be shocked to hear this, the death of man. <laughs> right. Like, this is now necessary. Why? Because it brings an end, it will bring an end to this fallen state on this earth. That is, that does God forbid that it becomes eternal, right? right. That's not why would that would be the opposite of what God intended for man? His his separation and fall be eternal. So the the man man the body has to go into the grave. The soul has to separate. But that's not the end. Of course, we have the death and resurrection of Christ, which then right. uh, is the uh, answer to that. But even that is a um, is a uh, a beneficial and loving action of God. Now the transhumanists come and say, "Wait a minute! This existence that we love because we apparently we love on this earth because <laughs> we love sin. I guess we want it to be eternal. We want it to be we want to be immortal here." And right. and they say it very explicitly. I just I was just watching an hour ago preparation for our talk. Some of the stuff that I'd, I'd seen earlier by Harari, uh, and he says uh, not this. Uh, superstition and mythology of, of religions in the past that promise a future uh, eternal life. But on this earth, we're going to have eternal life. And I thought, God, for, God forbid, <laughs> right. God forbid that we have eternal life on this earth. This is a valley of tears. And so, you know, the, 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 the gospel is that Christ came and we ascended his human nature, our human nature at the right hand of God the Father in heaven. Our right. hope, our life is there. We ascend there with every divine liturgy. This is where we exist and we should exist. We want to exist for eternity with God in communion. So it is exactly the inversion. It's the inversion. It's the it's the the opposite of the gospel. It's uh, and that shows yeah. and confirms for us as Christians that this is totally satanic and this is a sign of the coming of Antichrist. And um, uh, you know, the, 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 the Satan, the devil, is just the ape of God. All he does is take what Christ did and then he inverts it or he right. he mimics it and tries to do it in a way that would be under his power, under his authority uh, and within, you know, uh, ultimately coming to sit at his feet. Right. So he just looks at Christ. Oh, Theosis. OK, we'll have Theosis on Earth. Oh, you know, he has his, as I like to say, the mystery of iniquity that's at work in the world. You know, it, you can. You look at he looked at the twelve apostles. He looked at the seventy. He looked at the bishops. He looked at the spread of the church. He looked at the way Christ brought about salvation incrementally, and he said, "Oh, that's what I'll do. Right. I'll have my inner core. I'll have my disciples. I'll have my the disciples of disciples. I'll spread my religion and my uh, gospel little by little by little across the face of the earth until such a point where I can have, you know, a a, a global reach." Uh, but he just. He's just an ape of God. And so right. transhumanism is, is exactly that. You can see yeah. the hands of Satan all over the place. And as you talked about this sort of inversion, one, Satan has got us to create it because he can't create. He can't participate in creativity, that uncreated energy of God. So then mankind, through our own apostasy to Christ, through our own apostasy to God, has been utilizing our divine image to create the thing that's going to enslave us. And so yes. Elon Musk was just on with Tucker Carlson talking about Larry Page of Google, and yes. they're creating their, their deep mind program and how he was explicit in creating an AI God. And so this God is not personal. This God is not embodied. 
And so this is a this is a Gnostic, as you talked about in your stream, it's dataism. This is a philosophical perception that the more data we have, the more intelligent we the are. The reign of quantity, as uh, as Genon would say a uh, hundred years ago, this is the ultimate end of this. Uh, the opposite, right? The opposite of what uh, what. And this is the so much of the errors of the modern world comes back to this that we're going to use uh, the power, uh, the quantity, the, the 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 power that we gain through quantity to to change the quality of life to change somehow. Right. But it's a delusion. It's a it's an utter delusion. Right. So datism is is in the same trajectory, uh, and it's a it's a worship of power through numbers, power right. through quantity. And it's it, it's a it's a uh, uh, you know the it's a it's an ultimate in existence which is just super tragic, right. super pathetic, right? Yep. Uh, that they that they find in it some kind of salvation. I find extremely tragic and pathetic. Uh, that's that's what's amazing about these people. They don't they, they the minute they're stating this, I I wonder at them like Harari and others. I wonder. I say, don't they see how pathetic? what they're presenting is and they don't.